Hi everyone, this is Eric Goins from Automate Intelligently, and I have a second video about a restaurant ordering app. So uh, in the first video, we kind of went through this Aquasala app I have here. It was really high level, pretty generic um, ordering app that any restaurant or a bar or a food truck could use. Um, but one of the things that a lot of people have raised is one is what if you have uh, menu variants and, and what if you have a lot of those menu variants. So I came up with kind of a different workflow for this that I wanted to show you. It's super easy, easy and simple to, uh, to implement and it kind of helps you um, add custom things to that order. So what I want to show you here is I've broken this out into uh, kind of three and a half screens here that constitute kind of the ordering workflow. And this first one is menu categories. So these could be any categories you have on your menu, but it allows you to classify the items on your menu based off categories. This is really important because you might have something like, hey, I have tacos um, and you have maybe 10 different types of tacos. You don't wanna fill up your entire screen um, and menu with every type of taco, but you could put those tacos in have them be classified as tacos. And then when users go to the next screen, they can see a list of all of the different options they have for tacos. And that's that second screen here, select order items. When you get to um, this screen, depending on uh, what you click, and I'll show you that kind of how that works, that logic works in a minute, um, it will take you either to menu options or say, do you wanna buy more? Um, or add something else to your cart, which obviously you can customize completely. So let's go through this and then I'll show you how the database works. So all these are just generic screens. Um, there's nothing so important about them. But at this screen, <clears throat> when the user selects a date and time for pickup, this is what creates the order, okay? Right now there's no order set, but I've, I've already logged in, so they already know which user it is. Um, when I click this, it creates an unfulfilled order, okay? So that's done right there. You see our menu categories. Again, this is whatever is on your menu you can choose, okay? But if you go to sides, um, you know, there's, there's some dessert. Um, you know, you can have beverages, whatever. This is as simple as I could make it. Um, so... Let me show you two things here. First, we'll go to mains and I will add the roast beef rice bowl um, to my, uh, my uh, cart here. And now I can either check out, I'll just click this, okay? And you'll see I'm able to check out um, and I have my full checkout here. But if I go back and I click add more, okay, it'll take me, it takes me all the way back. Um, you, you, know, you can have your own preferences there. But if I select an item that has options, it will take me to a page where I can select one of these options for that. So I'm gonna say bacon, add to cart, I'm gonna say checkout. Okay, now let's go look at this database. So you just saw that I selected bacon in that. So um, if we go here and um, we can see bacon is written in the notes um, and then I also have another item here called menu options and it adds bacon to that. So it's kind of doubly added. Um, you also see, by the way, that this record um, shows that, there, that it contains options, okay? So if you, if you don't have anything that has those options, then, then that won't show up. So the way I did this is, um, so we have our menu categories, okay? Super high level, you can add a picture to all these. Obviously, I didn't have pictures for them, um, but but it's very, very easy and simple there, okay? I have my menu items, okay? These are the physical items on the menu. And, um, you know, I have a kind of a list of what it is here, just check marked, okay? And then I have, does it contain options? And then the menu options. So if you were to click here on these menu options, you would see the options from the menu option list. OK, 
Okay, so if we click out of here and we go to menu options, you can see the three options tied to this item. That's the easiest way you can do this. There are other things you could have, um, you know, basically any options you want and filter it in this menu options item here. You could have a multi-select drop down there. Um, the, the, the possibilities are really endless. The easiest thing I think for you to do though is to have a very simple workflow like this because it will make it easier for you to understand and break out the data instead of trying to give the user all of the options within one screen. Um, and, and that makes it very easy to make this kind of standardized across all of um, your entire menu because this could be, you know, if somebody selects coffee, you know, this drop down could show, you know, cream or no cream, things like that. And you can add m multiple sections of this based off of, you know, what item they're choosing and then have visibility settings. So, you know, if it's a drink, maybe you always have an option. Is it hot or is it cold? And then you might have other options there, but it's only visible if it's a drink. If you have any questions, send me an email at eric at automateintelligently.com or I'm always pretty active in the Slack group. Cheers and I hope that was helpful.